G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. On the bench today, the B Rotor BV1 Video Visor. There's millions of, well, not millions, I exaggerate. There are a lot of video visors out there, and B Rotor had a go originally with the, the first version of this, and I didn't really like it much. I gave it not a very good review. To their credit, RC Timer, uh, Frank from RC Timer, has sent in the next version for me to look at. So he's obviously uh, confident. Uh, and we'll take a look. Is it any better? Well, immediately you can see it's a much more professional looking product. It has, as well as the foam that the original one had, it's now got a plastic skeleton which holds it all together far more effectively than just gluing it. And uh, yeah, so it's looking a lot better. Also, there's a lot more buttons on it and everybody loves buttons. There are, what is it? One, two, three, four, five buttons. That's got to be good. And you'll notice immediately also it has diversity. It has two antenna connectors, SMA by the way, not RPSMA, which is good because SMA has sort of become the adopted standard. Um, and it comes with two antennas. It comes with the B-Rotor Honey Drop, which is a circularly polarized. Looks like it's a pagoda. I'll crack it open in another video. So it's already got a bit of a crack in it. Um, and also a patch antenna, a 14 dB. Well, they claim 14 dB. And it says DBI. What's the I stand for? Well, that's isotropic. It's 14 decibels over isotropic radiator, which is a radiator that has no gain at all and radiates evenly in all directions, which of course is physically impossible to do, but it gives you a reference point. So it's 15, 14 decibels over that, which is a lot. But is it? I don't know. Generally speaking, patch antennas do give you gain quite often, not as much as it says on the box, but um, it will give you some gain. I've tried it. It works. Hey, now you wouldn't really often use a patch antenna when you're flying close proximity because they're linearly polarized. You don't get the benefits of circular polarization if you've got a patch on your goggles or on your visor because quite often it'll pick up a reflection instead of the original signal which will be distorted and horrible and yucky. So if you're flying in close proximity where you don't need the extra range, use two circularly polarized antennas. I use a helical, five turn helical, get great results. Um, some people still use patches. I have to laugh when I see people fly mini quads with patches on, linear patches, because they just they'd be better to take the patch off and just use the, the one, an, one antenna because the, you, you, you'll get more distance, but it, it will give you so much more multipathing reflections, distortions at close, co close quarters. So, yeah, but it's a personal choice. Anyway, back to the goggles that I'm reviewing. Stop raving on, Bruce. Um, there's a fan in case you have trouble with the visor fogging up. I've never had trouble with a video visor fogging up. Goggles, yeah, they fog up all the time, but visors, no, I've never had that problem. I don't know why, but if you... Need it? There's a fan there and it goes all the time when you um, power it up so you don't have to switch it off and on. It's silent at the moment. Quite often these little fans get noisy over time. I can't comment on this because it's brand new. It's only had about an hour's operation so it's still perfectly silent and it's the same sort of fan that a lot of goggles use so yeah, shouldn't be too much concern over that. Um, now there is a connector here for an XT30. An XT30? What about a barrel connector? Well actually I'm glad they've used something other than a barrel connector. Where's my little thing? A barrel connectors like this, uh, we see, uh, see them a lot on FPV goggles, but to be honest, almost all of them eventually suffer from wire fatigue just in here. Now this one's supposed to be pretty good because it's got a flexible uh, support on the wire there, but this one has suffered from that thing. And my, This is off the Aonway Commander goggles, and my Aonways were intermittently rebooting. What's going on? Why, am I, why is my screen going black while I'm flying? Turns out it was actually this cable is faulty, the wire's broken inside, and it happens on just about every damn barrel connector I have. So the move to an XT30 is great because, you know, how do you, you can't resolder that. That's just, if the wire breaks, you're buggered, that's it. Um, with an XT30, of course, you could resolder the connector if it broke, and it comes with a power lead that has an XT30 on it. That's convenient because nothing else would fit, would it? The only downside is that it's a bugger of a job to get it in there because we've got, um, there's this sort of little divot in here, and you've got to sort of get it in parallel, but as you can see, the cord is, is kind of in the way. So you've got to bend the cord up at right angles, like this, get a right angle on the cord, then you can get it in, like so. And even then, the cord is going to be, you know, on this angle, so I expect that this will also break in there over time. Um, I don't know. Basic engineering. Why can't people get this right? Um, I have no idea. What I would do on here is maybe have a... Um, a little thing, plastic thing here, you could clip your cable into once you'd put it onto the goggles. Clip it into there, and then it's going to be strain relief. There'll be no movement in here. That'd be a nice adi addition, wouldn't it? Just a little, you know, uh, it just goes clunk into there, and then you can put your battery around the side here, or whatever. I don't know, but little things like that can make the difference between a great product, or a good product, and a great product. But it gets worse. <laughs> I'm picking faults now. The other end of this lead, as you can see, has a JST on it. But this wire is cheap, horrible plastic wire with a, with a very low strand count and horrible PVC insulation, which means being crimped into a JST like that, it's going to break. The wires are going to break inside there. So over time, it, 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 oh, 
where's my picture gone? So I'm going to put some heat shrink on here. They should have done it out of the factory. Heat shrink over there to remove the flex point or spread the stress over a wider area so that's less likely to happen. Or better still, just use a quality cable. Don't cheap out on the cable. Um, it comes with an adapter because you may not have a JST battery. Um, so it takes JST to XT30, XT60 because everybody has XT60 connectors. Uh, so you can use anything from a 2 cell to a 6 cell according to the instructions. But they recommend a 2 to 3 cell. And they say a 2200 battery will give you about 3 hours of operation, which is great because 3 hours is all the FPV I can take in a day. So that's good. Um, but because it has the XT30, you can, XT60, I'm sorry, you can use whatever batteries you've got lying around. If you've just flown your mini quad and you've just down a storage charge, well, that'll give you another, you know, quarter of an hour, 20 minutes of flying on your goggles. Brilliant. Wonderful. Okay, let's look at the ergonomics. AV connector, because you can plug in this little right angle jack plug, dot, dot, and then you can use this end to either spit signal out of your video visor, just use it as a DVR and a receiver, or you can put signal in here. So if you're running a different frequency, 1.2, 2.4, uh, 900, whatever, you can put a video signal in here and it'll appear on the goggles. Huh, pretty standard stuff, but it does mean you're not limited to 5.8 gigahertz. And you can use this as a backup receiver, or you just use it as a DVR if you want to, I suppose, because it does have a DVR. Did I mention that? Of course I didn't, but here I am now mentioning it. Um, so you'll see there's a little uh, micro SD slot in there, just in down there, which again, it's a pain in the ass to get a card in because there's so little space here, it's got to fiddle around. Um, so put, you put your micro SD slot in there and you've got a button over here for recording. Simple as, it's, good. it's one of the simplest setups I've seen, so that's really good. I have checked the quality of the recording and it is um, not too bad actually. It's Motion JPEG, it's not MP4, it's not like H.264 or anything, which is a bit of a shame because Motion JPEG um, is not, in many cases, many, not as good for the amount of bandwidth you use, but it's okay, it's fine, it looks good. I'll, show you some video in a moment uh, so you can see for yourself whether you like the DVR recording but I'm quite happy with it uh, but now now finally we'll get onto the ergonomics right um, it's pretty standard isn't it you stick your face in here and fly a model what could go wrong um, it has a soft surround which is pretty normal unlike video other, a lot of other video glasses which just have a foam um, face surround so for example here are the EA sheen ones that thank you um, Justin Bardwell sent me that uh, Josh, Joshua Bardwell, oh, I can't remember, Joshua Bardwell, that's right. Uh, but see this has got like foam and foam, well this can break away, peel away and my own my commanders are the worst example, it's all sort of ripped and torn just from putting it off on my face because the foam is unprotected. This has a nice fabric surround on the foam so the foam is not going to peel away and fall apart. That's a really good feature, I like that much better than just raw foam on the edges. Um, it is held on with double sided tape down here, you can see if I pull that back, see the double sided tape, that's not so good because on the original b rider video visor, this did come off over time, it just lost its sticky and came off, which is a real pain in the backside. But I guess it's, it's better than nothing and I can't see an easy way to make a really durable way of holding this on. All video goggles and visors, this stuff tends to peel off over time. One thing you notice is the massive great hole here for your nose, did they think I was a horse or what? This is a massive great hole. Um, put your snoz in there, now there's two schools of thought because everybody's face is different. You can either provide a visor with very little space here and get people to hack it out to fit them, or you can provide a visor with a lot of space and people can add foam in here to block out the light. Um, because yes, light does come through here. It's not that distracting. I flew with them, didn't really, after a couple of seconds in the air, you didn't notice the light coming in. But if you want to get rid of the light, get some of that self-adhesive door seal foam that you can get from the hardware store, just put a couple of layers in there. That'll solve the problem. All fixed, no worries at all. Right. Um, what else is there? Oh, he's got the straps, of course. Elasticated, yes, uh, Granny's knicker elastic there. So one little strap over the top, which is good. One strap around the back. That means it doesn't try and fall off your face. And if we get the scales that don't show the blood, we'll see how heavy it is, because it feels really, really light. Remembering, of course, that unlike some of the other video visors, it doesn't have a battery in it. So it, you can have the battery, out, you know, sort of out the side or out the back, or in your pocket to counterbalance the weight. So I'm going to put the battery cable around and we're going to stick it on the scales that don't show the blood and it weighs 281 or 280 grams it just lost weight must be on a jenny craig no look jenny craig thank you um yeah so it's pretty light it's very light and because it's relatively short it doesn't have a sort of a leverage on your face so in that respect it does fit fairly well what i did notice though was that the the position of the screen is such that i had to actually sort of uh, set it up so I could look down towards the bottom of the screen. I couldn't see the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen at the same time. It's like it was too narrow in the 
in the vertical area, so it was cutting off my top of my picture or the bottom of my picture. And there is um, kind of an escutcheon in there that may be causing that, I don't know. But it didn't really get in the way. I was still able to land my mini quad with its tilted camera, which is a good thing. What I'm going to do now is actually put a mi the micro SD card in here I had in it before when I had a flight. And I mean, you can see how fiddly that this is just like if the power cord's in there, it's almost impossible because you can't get your, my big booty fingers will not fit in there. I've got to get it started in there and then try and get it straight because otherwise it won't go in. And this is an ergonomic nightmare. There we go. Oh, and it didn't, it didn't lock in. Let's go. Now it's latched in. Okay, so that's, uh, if you're gonna, not going to take the SD card out, not a problem, but why would you not take it out? Because there's no USB connected to download directly from the goggles. You have to take the card out to get the video footage off it. So, um, yeah, that could be improved. But seriously, they could improve that. There's a few features on this that they could improve. But let's, uh, let's for a start, let's turn it on and let's have a look at what the image looks like through the little lens there. And of course, it's got the big lens LCD behind. There's no focal length adjustment. So it'll limit the number of people who can use it. I found it a bit blurry, but I find all video goggles or video visors blurry. I don't know why I've never been able to find one that I could focus on. Right, I've turned out one of my studio lights, so hopefully we'll get a better picture of what's going on inside here. I'll hold down the power button, and there we go, ching, ching, ching. There is the B-Rotor screen, and if I pull in a bit, you can see, look, there's my, I'll try and get this lined up. You see, probably see here that you can't see the bottom and the top of the screen at the same time, which is kind of annoying. Now, what you're seeing there is actually the seat that I've got my mini quad set on. That's a really crap, there's nothing much interesting to see there, is there? So I'm going to go and I'm just, whoops, I'm just going to go and change that so we get something better to look at. One moment, please. Jump cut. Now that's better. That's the view from outside my workshop. And you can see the tower just in the corner up here and this side of the workshop. And the blue sky, well, grey sky today, and green grass. So I haven't adjusted anything. This is exactly stock out of the box. I haven't set brightness or contrast. So that gives you an idea. And it's a very cloudy, murky day today. It was actually fine when I flew, but it's a cloudy, murky day today. So it's not performing too badly. Now the quad we're looking at has got a run cam split on it. And so this must be getting a bit of multi pathing because this is actually, we're inside that tin building. So naturally we're going to get some pretty crappy signal in here. So it's working pretty well. Um, a bit of, you know, flickering and things. If I move this around, I'll probably find a null point if I try really hard and that would make it, oh, nah. There we go. So anyway, you can see up in the top left corner, we've got a display that tells us we're on antenna A, RFA. Um, we're on channel D5, and there's the frequency that we're working on. On the right-hand side tells us the voltage of our, oh, sorry, so you can see it, voltage of our battery connected to our video goggles. So there's some useful information on there. That's all well and good. Now I'm going to show you one thing that I'm not too fussed about. doesn't always work. This is the scan. Um, there is a search button here, which is for scanning. Let me move all this crap out of the way. Um, search button, right? I'm going to push that, and you watch what happens. Let's push the search button. There we go. So you can see now we've got a, it caught the frequency there, and we've got a bar graph as it's stepping through the channels. There we go. Another couple of channels it can receive signal on. Stepping across, stepping across. Um, we just let it do its thing. And normally the scan works, you know, it finds several channels and it picks the strongest one and then goes back to it, and you're all tuned in. So let's see what happens at the end of this. Just wait. Just talk amongst yourselves. Have a coffee. Have a little lie down if you're tired. Oh, look. What the hell went on there? The scan just doesn't seem to work 90% of the time. It found several channels which had a picture on, but it said no, it's gone back to, what is it? I can't even read that because that's another problem. But obviously, meh, the scan didn't work. I'm gonna, I don't know. Now, if you look in the top left corner of the screen where the green writing is, because we've got snow, you can't actually read it. It's very hard to read. Certainly it's, um, it's difficult, so I can't even tell what channel I'm not on. Uh, it's a real hassle. So I'll do the search again. Let's try again, just to make sure it wasn't a, an anomaly. And there you go, you can see the picture popping up here because there are channels that it receives the signal on. There we go. And this is only one video transmitter operating at the moment, so it's not getting confused by multiple signals. Um, should be another one in a minute. There we go, see? So it's, it's getting a valid signal. Oh, it's starting to rain. I better go and bring that in. Um, getting a valid signal, and when it gets to the end, will it go back to... No! No, fail! Fail! The search fails! That's a big negative. It's one of the few things I've found that I don't like about these, this video visor. Now, I'm sorry if there's some background noise in this video, but it has started raining again in our glorious summer. But um, so the problem we've got now is that we didn't, it didn't pick up on our channel. So we have to manually go to that channel using the band and channel switch over here. But the problem is you can't actually read the band and channel you're on in the top left corner there because against the snow, the green just doesn't really pop enough. I can't see what band or what channel I'm on and I can't see the effect of the button. So that's kind of a really, 
It's a real drawback feature, I'm afraid. Okay, but here's a look through the visor at some stuff I recorded before. You can see there's a blue, bluer sky around. I'll just press the play button so that it starts playing. And I notice that through the DVR, the image doesn't look quite so sharp as when I was flying, which is standard reason because DVRs do have an effect on the signal that won't be perfect. But you can see again this, you know, to look up and look down, if you're looking straight in, you just don't get that whole screen. It's like stuff's missing off the bottom. I also notice it has 480 lines of vertical resolution on the DVR recording, which means if you're running a PAL system with 756 lines, you're probably going to lose stuff off the bottom. You're going to lose some of your OSD information if you're running an OSD. Right, here we go, flying down the runway. I'll actually overlay the real DVR footage in here now, and I'll narrate it as we go. So I did my flying test down here. This is about 300 meters from the... Uh, from where I was standing with the goggles on when I get to the windsock down there. See, it's, it's pretty crisp and clear. There's no real problems here. Bit of noise on the turn here. See, that's, uh, and it's horizontal lines. Now, um, I don't know, that could be related to the DVR switching. I haven't checked to see whether this is receiver or just antenna diversity. And I think we get a bit more interference as we fly back past the hangars because we're going to get some multi-pathing partly due to using that patch antenna, which I used the stuff exactly as they sent it to me. A little bit there, a little bit there. See that? So that's just a little bit of because it's right out in front of me now, so it should have been crystal clear, but we're getting um, just some reflections and come around again. So you can see that the, the, the DVR performance is I quite, I think it's quite good actually. For a motion JPEG, it's not too bad. And the, the file, which is this entire flight, is about 200 megabytes. So it is, um, it's pretty heavy on the bandwidth, but you know, in terms of storage, but apart from that, it's, you know, no grizzles, pretty damn good. Um, and so let me sort of summarize what I've found here with this visor while we watch the rest of this footage. Uh, positives, well, it works pretty much advertised out of the box. 40 channels, diversity, it comes with a couple of aerials that seem to work quite well. Um, it's nice and light, fits on your face reasonably well. You can customize it to fit by adding a bit of foam if you want to. Comes with an XT30 power connector, and so it's quite versatile and power source from 2 to 6S. Um, yeah, I, you know, and the, the physical construction is quite nice. Um, I'm not that fussed about the placement of the connectors because it's really faff to get them in and out. And also that micro SD card, that's also a pain in the backside to get in and out. It's 16.9 by default, but I haven't checked. You probably can change it through the menu. I like 16.9, it suits me fine. The L resolution of the LCD itself is 800 by 480. In fact, all these specs, you can go onto the RC Timer website. I'll put a link in the description, not an affiliate link, but you can follow the link, get more info if you like. Now the downsides, well, the scan is broken. The scan doesn't work. And, not important if you're just flying on your own and you just use one channel, that's fine. But if you want to use these as spectator goggles, well, I'm sorry, but you're, it's, it's annoying because I love to give someone a visor and say, just press that button and it will find whatever model is flying. And they can use it all day and they can easily change channels by pressing the scan button. Not going to work on this, is it? So, yeah, it disqualifies them to some degree as spectator goggles, which is where visors really shine. Um, and, but apart from that, it's all well and good, all fine and dandy. It's, it's as good a set of goggles, except for perhaps one final thing that I'll mention. Like many people my age, I'm old. Ha <laughs> ha, who'd have thought? But um, I wear corrective lenses in normal day-to-day -day activities, although my vision's good at two meters. From about one meter to three meters, my vision's really quite good. So I don't wear my glasses and I'm working on the bench and often when I'm talking to camera, I don't wear my glasses because I want to be able to read stuff. But um, for everything else, I wear glasses. A lot of people my age actually wear glasses for reading. I don't have to, so I'm lucky. Um, in which case, uh, the, the focal length of these things is not quite right for them. They need some more corrective eyewear to help. Now, with video goggles, you can get diopters which go in here to adjust the focal things in here. So that, that enables you to um, have the glasses customized and account for your specific vision impairments, right? fine. You know, can't get diopters for these. You, there's one lens, it's not movable, that's it. And this is the same for most visors, not, not, sol not sort of singling out the B rotor, I'm just saying visors in general. So it would be nice if the people who made visors made them wide enough so you could wear your glasses under them. Some visors do have that capability. The Quantum Cyclops is pretty good in that respect. You can wear your glasses under the Quantum Cyclops, that's excellent. Um, but these, you can't. So, um, be aware that if you need corrective eyewear, if you wear corrective eyewear, this is probably not the visor for you, as are many of the visors, the low-cost visors, are not the visors for you because you can't wear your glasses under them. If you're younger and your eyes are really good or you don't need corrective eyewear, then this is, this is, this is a pretty satisfactory product. I mean, scan issues notwithstanding, it did everything I wanted it to do, and I'm not a fan of visors. I, I don't like them, but I, I flew this thing and had some fun. You know, I flew my mini quad with this on, had some fun by the end of a couple of flights, I was feeling quite comfortable, which is really kind of good. So, yep, uh, this is certainly better than nothing. And I'd have to say, 
it's better than these damn e-sheens which are terrible video glasses look you know the, when i used these uh, the picture was actually round i couldn't see the edges of the screen because the, the the optics are so bad that everything was vignetted this big immersive picture lovely beautiful you know so there you go that's uh, pretty much my summary um thank you frank uh, disclosure this was sent in by rc timer frank from rc timer sent this in for review um, he took a bit of a gamble because I gave the last one a real caning. Um, this is a lot better, but Frank, you need to fix that scan. You really, really do because it compromises the utility of these goggles as visitor, oh, sorry, uh, as passenger, go uh, passenger visor. And it'd be nice also if this was a little bit less fiddly in here, but uh, in the meantime, she's all good, works fine. Um, I will be testing these antennas separately. He sent me some separate ones to test, which I'll be doing. But in the meantime, um, if you're looking for a relatively low cost video visor, Include this in your list. You've seen the pros and cons. You can make your own decisions. Um, and I'll put, as I put a link to it on the RC Timer website. Go and have a look. And if you've got any questions or comments, stick them down there in the questions and comments section, and I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, thank you for watching. And now um, I'll go and do some more testing. Bye for now.